ثانك يو دكتور هبه صباح الخير يعني uh, it is very hard to call me as expert in the presence of my professors in the room and my previous colleagues uh, my name is محمد عبد السلام I'm the manager, program manager at Nilepreneurs. I'm the responsible person for the awareness program, which is the first program Dr. Heba mentioned in the presentation. I'm a PhD fellow at Nile University since 2014. And uh, the reason I went to Nile University was because of technology management program. Uh, how many of you uh, st studied agriculture before? How many of you has a background in agriculture? Please raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. How many of you uh, studied uh, business? Thank you. Technology? Okay, so the group of technology is not a big number. That's good. How many of you are familiar with the term IO80? Okay, two, three, four. Okay. I'm free to say many things that are not realistic, but uh, no problem. I will try to use this advantage and to, to make it uh, really a little bit uh, short. Uh, I received this notice uh, to prepare a presentation about the ICT in agribusiness in Egypt, uh, which was just uh, short notice. So I prepared a very short presentation for two hours, and I hope that you are not going to escape from the room. So I will start by this, why I went to Nile University. Actually, I worked with a uh, technology team and with the business team in 2008, 2009. And at this time, I was the agricultural person who was trying to convey experience and about describing the phenomena, we are trying to put solutions to it. When you are dealing with agronomists or agricultural people, they shower you with requirements. They give you big lists of requirements that you have to comply with. And at the end, when you spend your time to develop this kind of solution and to give it to them, they are going to use up to 5% of the product. This is why, because we as agronomists, we work with nature, we work with environment, we work with farmers. So we are keen about so many details you cannot imagine. If you spend one day working as agronomist, you are going to handle not less than 80 tasks per day. So this is why when they convey the requirements, they convey the requirements in a way that is not really helping the developers or people working in the business of ICT. So to start with this, how can we do a proper thing? I decide in 2014 to go to Nile University and to study management of technology which is a domain for those working in the business and in the technology side. I was going there to know how to speak the language of technology. So when I'm in the frame of agronomists speaking, I can convey the proper requirements to the technology people, not to work as technology expert. So to start with this, we have innovation cycle. Why am I starting with the innovation cycle? The innovation cycle is the keyword. You have pushing system and pulling system. Everyone is interested to go to the field of technology because of the attraction of technology. How many of you think that the farmers are illiterate? They cannot deal with technology? Please raise your hand if you are, okay. They cannot deal with technology. No, they cannot. Huh? They can. So we have, okay, we have contradiction in the room. That's good. So, how many of you think about this magic tool in the hand of the farmer? But putting it in a proper frame, you can get advant advantage of this. Putting it in the wrong frame, you are not going to go anywhere with it. This is the pulling and pushing system. If you want to push technologies to the farmers, you are going to push it with no end. But if it is coming from their side, so you are going to pulling them. You have to be in this. You can go to this certain services using this. So it is not at the end a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group that can be also beneficial for them. But they are going to use this device for other purposes. 
or things that they didn't know before. The innovation cycle is easy, starting by identifying the problem itself, try to solve the problem, and then go to exploit it. To make that, you need money. You have to have this knowledge. So starting from having the knowledge, then transferring it into innovation, and then spending on it to make some R&D, to return back as knowledge, proper knowledge, that are going to the same cycle forever. When you are working with education and institution or with extension services or with any ministry, you have to bridge between the needs of the sector and the capabilities that you have inside this facility. So you have scientific research inside the universities. They are doing a lot of things, a lot of things that they are not commercialized. They are not linked to the real needs of the society. If they are doing just 10% of their research to serve the community in a proper way and speaking the language of the business people. Because if you are not speaking the language of business and you are speaking the language of scientists, no one will listen to you except in the conferences. You are going to deal with other scientists. So it means that the cycle, the previous cycle is not continued. The previous cycle is still between the knowledge and the innovation. Nobody is paying for it, so keep it at your institution. Nobody is going to get benefits out of it. You have to bridge this up. So to make this in a proper way, it's a long trip. Identify the thing. Try to commercialize it. Between the two angles, you have to fulfill certain requirements to make the product really touching bases and really accepted by the, tar the target audience. To do that, we are going to speak about some cases in ICT and agribusiness. So one of the classifications about ICT and agribusiness is this one. They are framing the ICT and agribusiness in three main areas. Pre-cultivation, crop cultivation and harvest, and post-harvest. There are other categorization for defining ICT and agribusiness. But this is one of the popular used with many researchers in that field. When you speak about the pre-cultivation, you have rooms for technology penetration in the field of pre-cultivation. Soil mapping, remote sensing, things related to the satellite imaging and image processing and all of this kind of technologies. For the crop cultivation, for the things, okay, we have uh, stuff like uh, uh, crop control, crop management, using devices to give you some information about the soil moisture, the contents, the, the, the pesticide that you should uh, detect to know what, uh, sorry, not the pesticide that you should detect, the kind of climate that is fu pushing or giving, allowing pests to make attack on your products. So this is the second level. The third one is the post-harvest to get idea about what is there and the traceability of the solutions. So in Egypt, ICT in agribusiness is not a new thing. ICT in agribusiness is since years. It started from the Ferkin and Ratkin when they started to work with it with FAO. It started with the traceability project of UNIDO. It started with other initiatives that have been there in the country for more than 15 years now. So it is not a, a new thing. It is not a new thing, but we have to cope with the new technologies that are existing in the field now and get benefit out of it. So we have some examples that are in Egypt, traceability, integration between systems, which is when you have some devices that can speak to other clouds or systems, so you have this kind of integration. The IOAT term is Internet of Agriculture Things, when you can throw some devices into your farm and those devices are going to give you information about sync all kind of details surrounding your product or your plant. These are the things related to IOAT. IOAT has also several applications to get the identification of maturity. Just to fly something in your field and then you have information about the places that need to be inter, uh, pest, uh, uh, sprayed with pesticide. Not to spray the whole field. These are the things that are related to IOAT. The extension services, which is one of the things that 
started by Bashair or started by Virgil and Ratkin. I'm not going to say all the examples of the country, but I'm trying to focus on just a couple of examples to give you idea. Commercialization and marketing and access to finance. So these are the areas of ICT in Egypt that are well known till now. One of the things was the E-Trace project, which was funded by the Italian cooperation and was managed by uh, UNIDU. Uh, this can be considered from the eye of a researcher in the field of ICT in agribusiness, one of the new innovative solutions that has penetrated the sector of agribusiness in Egypt in 2004 until 2008. Until that time, we couldn't know about the using the batching and dispatching systems of barcode and this kind of stuff. We used to put labels and stuff, things, on the, on the machines or on the cartons without any kind of defining. We have also another project that was funded by the EU and under an FB6 uh, uh, program, which is Traceback. And they have also many solutions. One of the solutions was to make a lab uh, program to control the batches of supplies in the dairy sector. And this was one of the tools that they used to save their time, to trace back the product or the, the batch that is infected with problems. It means that you have to go back into the silos and get all the data about all the suppliers that they supplied the factory with milk. One of the solutions was using RFID tags. Do you know RFID tags? How many of you, okay, you know it? How many does not know the RFID? Okay, when you go to the library, you buy some stuff, or when you go to in a supermarket, or, sorry, in a shop, in a outlet, you get one of the clothes without paying it, and you go outside from the door, what is happening? Peeps, peeps, peeps is the RFID tag just passed into a reader, and this reader is transferring the signal to, the, to alarm the owner of the shop that you stole something. This is the RFID application on this purpose. We took the same application, but we put it to identify workers inside the back house. Because in green beans, you are allowed to work without wearing gloves, putting the green beans into a plastic bags. So it means plastic on plastic, you cannot do that. You, have, you can work with a naked hand. It means that you have to wash your hand. Putting identity on the worker that can be traced inside the facility. It means that after 15 minutes, they should wash their hands. If they didn't do that, they are going to be reported into the system that they are not washing their hands and they are causing contamination to the product. So this is one of the usages of RFID tags inside the facility. The last thing of this presentation, I, I hope that I'm, I didn't uh, take the two hours that I promised you to do, is other potential interventions. The potential interventions we know, the, we identified the animal production sector as one of the sectors that needs ICT solutions. Actually, one of our research projects in the university was the Internet of Cows. And we identified a big list of devices that can monitor the the vehicle data about the animals and also their movement inside the cattle yard and detecting it to uh, some kind of diseases that are affecting the cattle before identifying it by the lab tests. One of the things also for the uh, IOT is the electronic nose, which is you put some device inside the container that can detect certain kind of uh, uh, fermentation or exposure of uh, the uh, mark of uh, dispolting of the products inside the containers or using a vision machines like you can put some kind of cameras inside the field to give you information about maturity pests or other parameters but just you have to to teach the machine about all the other things the field scripts is one of the solutions that is well known all over the world and they are using this kind of technologies uh, I hope that I didn't take a long time and thank you for your passion. <laughs>